welcome everyone also from my side. So my name is Gian Aydin. I'm electrical engineer for Delta Energy Systems and I'm the lead engineer for ORV3 and ORV3 HPR. Um, I will present today uh, the next requirements and considera uh, considerations together with Harry, my colleague from Advanced Energy. So here's a short agenda, but I think uh, we can directly move to the topics. So first of all, I would like to compare the HPR to the HPR ORV uh, V2. So the input voltage range is the same for both. It's 180 to 305 uh, volt AC. And the output power is 5.5, and we are going now to 12. You see it also on the current because the the voltage level from the output power is, uh, the out output voltage is the same. So we have a droop from 50 volts to 49. And at 49, you see we are going from 112 amps to 244. The peak efficiency is still uh, 97.5, including the fan losses. Temperature is the same. And one of the main differences between these two is um, the outer dimension of the PSU has changed. So from ORV3 to HPR, we were able to have the same width of the PSU, but just increase the length. But due to the increase from 5.5 to 12 kilowatt, we have changed the form factor, and uh, the PSUs are going now from 73.5 uh, to 83.4 mm. So we have six PSUs, which are a bit uh, wider, but the PMM board, which uh, had has four ports on the ORV3 and on the HPR has now two ports and two of the RJ45 moved to the back. But I will later show you the details. So here are the major differences between ORV3 and going to ORV3 HPR and HPR2. So Differences for sure the output power. So we are going from 33 kilowatts to 72 kilowatts per shelf. Um, one big change is also the transition method to BBU. So when we started with ORV3, we had the voltage uh, drop of three volts to activate the BBUs. And we changed this for HPR to a dedicated signal. So once uh, AC is gone, or the bulk voltage has reached the critical limit, we will activate the AC loss signal so that the BBU knows it needs to take over. Then also we have updated pulse load requirements, um, which were changed due to the new generation of GPUs. Um, one of the major differences is also now we have uh, a PMM, so a power monitoring module. So in the past we had just a PMI, which is a uh, traces only from, from the shelf back, collecting and uh, bringing to the front. Now we have a PMM with a dedicated microcontroller, which is pinging all the information from the PSUs. Um, for the HPR, we introduced also the shelf output connector with integrated NTCs, as with increasing the output power, the temperatures of the bus bar and the connector are critical, so we are able to monitor all the temperatures and in case of any over temperature, the PSUs will shut off. So the last points are for HPR V2. As mentioned earlier, um, we, have the, we have the VIS, which changed from 73.5 to 83.4. But on top of this, I think one of the major differences for the new shelf for HPR V2 is uh, we are changing from the so-called bar clip or this clip temperature from different vendors, we are going to a bolted bus bar to have a proper connection from, uh, from the shelf to the bus bars. So here you can see also um, the 3D models, so mechanical comparison. You see in the past we had 73.5. So we were able in the past just to increase the length and stay with it. And now we are going to HPR V2, and we have 790 and 83.4. So this you will also see in the next slide, because 
here you can directly see in the past this is the same structure and when you look from the front the HPR looks similar to RV3 because both have four RJ445 ports which you see here on the left and uh, for the next generation as we need to have more width and the double row fan we need to, to reduce this number of RJ445 pins to two. So here you can also see the bolted bus bar, which is here highlighted. And in the past we had this so-called bar clip or different vendor names. Um, yeah, you see also a big difference in the, in the AC input connector. So in the past, the connectors were similar, just with bigger diameters. And now we need to increase to two times 60 amps. So the connector has completely changed. So here's the actual curve of uh, HPR uh, PFC, uh, PSU. So you see the efficiency at 277 is uh, above 97.5.6. So it's easily fulfilling the requirements. So one topic I would like to go into details today is the peak shaving shelf with the increased EDPP requirements and uh, Yes, demand for this kind of things. Um, we are working on a peak shelf, peak shaving shelf, a super capacitor shelf, you can call it. So as you know, with the GPU loading, you see your input current fluctuation. So the EDPP is visible on the uh, input current. And uh, to show you some PCS theory, so the capacitor shelf, you see that the input current fluctuation, which was different in the first slide, is now negligated. So you can see during that operation, if the peak load is coming, which is the chapter one, you see that here it's discharged from the capacitors. And uh, during the load time here, we are also charging. And uh, the EDPP is normally you have the pulse load pattern you go to 100% and later you have the low time. And especially during this low times, we will definitely charge the capacitor. So you, here you can also see a picture from, uh, from the measurements directly. So this is without, and you see always when the peak loads are kicking in, you see the input current fluctuation. You see also the, on the eye share, which is reflecting the load. And with the capacitor shelf, you see it's reduced heavily. And also the I share signal is nearly constant. For sure you have the low transient fluctuation, but in general it's much, much better. Um, one of the last uh, things I think which is interest of all power here is the overview of HVDC topologies. So right now we are here. So we have the 72 watts. We are going from the AC AC-DC, DC-DC to the servers. Um, yeah, so the next step is the HVDC side rack, which everybody is waiting for. And you have the AC-DC, the DC-DC, and going directly to the side pocket shelf. And I just want to give you an outlook here about the next uh, two things. And maybe what is more interesting for you guys is uh, one of the picture from the HVDC sidecar. So this is what we are right now um, at the bring up. And you can here see the AC PDUs, the DC PDUs. This is the placement for the power shelves. And here you have the BBU and CBU shelves. From the rear, you can see the HVDC bus bar. And uh, the cross link to the IT rack is done with, a, with this kind of connection. So it's going from the DC uh, PDUs directly the thing. So, oh. Sorry, Harry, I took a lot of time. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you. All right. So I'm just going to carry on from here. All right. So, so uh, Gian put some light to it, you know, so as we are going and we saw yesterday from Meta, if you happen to see that presentation, we talked about the power roadmap that we're going to HPR V2, V3, and V4. So, you know, this, if you look at it, the AI applications and NVIDIA GPUs 
have really accelerated the need for higher and higher power. A and what you're seeing here is, you know, we talked about ORV2, not in that distant future, past, right? It was like 2022. We were looking at 13 kilowatts per, uh, per system or, or per power shelf. We moved on to ORV3, 33 kilowatts, and uh, that was middle and 2024. And now H from this year, when we are talking about HPR, we, you know, that if you put three of those power shelves together, we are talking about, uh, you know, 100 kilowatts. Uh, next year, uh, the next version, when we talk about 12 kilowatt PSUs, uh, 72 kilowatt per power shelf, three of those in the system. If you do that math, 190 kilowatts. So we are looking at in 2024 or, or 2020, middle of 2020, uh, 2025, I'm sorry, uh, 200. And if you look at uh, the sidecar and all the other things we are talking about, we are talking about 750 to one megawatt racks, right? So that's how it, it's been. Uh, so I'm just gonna focus a little bit on the data center power trend. Uh, we talked, we looked at HPR, uh, which, which, is in, which is in production now, which is 5.5 kilowatt PSUs, gives you 33 kilowatts of power. Uh, we moved on, I guess we skipped literally 10 kilowatts. Uh, we moved on to 12 kilowatts uh, towards the end of this year. Uh, that's gonna give you 72 kilowatts per power shelf. Uh, where do we go from here? I mean, you know, we are talking about 70 kilowatts per OU, right? And we are, I think we are getting to the limit of uh, air cooling or, or, or thereabouts uh, with, with single phase. And again, that remains to be seen. So then we move on to HVDC, right? I guess, you know, that, 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 that helps with uh, the helps with lowering the currents and, and help, help improve the overall efficiency. Uh, what has been the trend in, in general? I mean, I'm, I'm, this is just a very high level view. I'm just complimenting the work that uh, uh, Jihan did. So, you know, where are we going? We still have the AC bus phase, which are 4153 phase or 483 phase, uh, uh, yeah, and that translates and if you use uh, and if you use 50 volt buses with HVDC, the first step that if you saw Google's presentation yesterday, they are talking about using a sidecar. So that's the intermediate step. Uh, then the next step is, uh, I think, beyond when we move beyond 12 kilowatt PSUs, we have to perhaps look at a three phase uh, PSUs. So that will take you, you know, I I don't know anywhere from 20 to 25 kilowatts per PSU thereabouts. Ju the, the, the jury is still out, and uh, perhaps liquid cool. We have to look at liquid cool when we go there, HVDC output. And when, and the next step is HVDC direct to server. I, th I think that's, that's essentially where we are going, where if you look at the, the, the third part of this uh, picture, uh, the HVDC busway will be 800 volts or plus and minus uh, for 400 volts. And, uh, HVDC direct to server. So as we skip the power shelves and uh, then we got to think of the solutions in not too distant future, perhaps a year, year and a half from now. Uh, in drag and power, if you've been attending, uh, there's been some very interesting discussions. I got to give uh, credit to, uh, I just want to mention uh, Brent, Brent McDonald. Uh, he's been, uh, you know, he, he put this forth and we are having some really good debate when we go to 800 volts. We, look, we have evaluated four different grounding methods. We are still talking about it, whether uh, we ground in the middle for, for you know, the, 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 on the 800 volts or plus and minus 400 or, or on the output remains to be seen. So I guess this is where we need everyone's input to see what really makes sense uh, as we go forward, forward here with that one. So a lot of work to be done. I think the next few meetings of RAG and Power will be exciting where we talk about the next generation specifications, uh, HVDC, power, power specs, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so, okay, so, so that was a high level view as to where we are going. Uh, so now I'm just gonna touch base on, on the products that are driving all this. Here is a 33 kilowatt shelf, HPR. Uh, I'm not gonna get into details. You'll all have the access to the presentation, so. Uh, and, and Jihan covered that as well, because Delta is also designing the similar parts. 
uh, 72 kilowatts. So essentially one after the other, right? So we have 72 kilowatts coming towards the end of the year, uh, 12 kilowatt PSU, 72 kilowatt power shelf, uh, close to 98% efficiency, designed for maximum power in you know, one OU space. Uh, this enables up to 200 kilowatts or more uh, in, in a rack. Uh, so I'm just gonna touch briefly of the key things uh, that are really important. As we all know, the, the, the load profile for GPUs, uh, you know, they require, you know, uh, they require a, a, a vast change in, in load profile. And here you're seeing in, the, in this graphic, here's a real, a real waveform, there's a 15% to 136%, you know, the, the load the low movement. So you're seeing at the input current, it's it's pretty stable. You don't see any any big any uh, degradation of the current, and uh, you know power limit is set to eight and a half kilowatts, and power factor is 0.993, uh, and the IDHD is you know well within the specs. Here the load changes from 15% to 160%, and you are seeing pretty much uh, power factor close to one and ITHD, you know, 2.9%, so impressive performance. I mean, that's the kind of requirement we need with, with, with these uh, GPUs and, and, and the output profiles that we need to account for. Uh, this is another important thing, right? You know, when you do the, the, previously, when you looked at the input power limit, we set to low points, uh, your PSU would shut down, but that is not allowed, so what happens now is, uh, when the input power is set, let's say, to four and a half kilowatt via Modbus, and uh, auto, so what happens as, as the bulk voltage goes down, the system will just not shut down, and you know, power limit will take place, as you can see, uh, and, and, and will keep on working. Uh, just to touch a uh, briefly, uh, I guess if you, use a, if you use the HPR shelf, you would need either, in general, a, a power management controller, and you know, uh, we all offer that. That's needed for a control. You know, using uh, Modbus or Canbus or uh, Redfish and all those interfaces. The PMM is a very interesting device. It helps address and communicates. It helps daisy chaining function and helps communicate with all the BBUs and PSUs and gives them an address so that they can all work effectively and provides a Modbus as address. You know, you can do via Canbus or you know or with, with the Modbus, right? So this is a very interesting step between uh, if you're familiar with PMI power management interface, which just had you know, brought the connections from the, from the rear to the front, uh, and PMC, which is uh, an A-speed based system. This is somewhere in the middle you know, you know, and, uh, and does jobs. So at least I wanna say that you do have the options, right, if you wanna go this route. Uh, finally, I just uh, talk about the products. Uh, so here we have uh, ORV3 18 kilowatt power shelf. Uh, which uh, uses three kilowatt PSU, and for HPR or V2, we have 33 and 72 kilowatts, and that uses five and a half to uh, 12 kilowatts. All right, I know I'm going over time, so uh, my last request to every one of you is please join, uh, yeah, come on, Jen, please join our uh, Rack and Power. Uh, as we move to HVDC and high power, we will need your help to help influence the specs and make sure your requirements are taken into considerations because everybody's requirements are different and uh, we wanna make sure that we can you know, help influence the specs. Uh, all right, that's the end. Questions? All right, I think that was very good. All right, thank you.